Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21. I think it was, Robert. Did I say 21 or did I say 22? I can't remember. I think you said 21. 21 uh, of uh, AVD Monthly. I'm your host, Andy Whiteside, AVD Monthly plus Nerdio. I've got uh, Rob Shaw with us. Rob, it's, it's been a while, man. I'm so happy to have you back. Good to be back. Thanks for having me, Andy. I think uh, I think a lot of I think the fact that you're back is because um, maybe your role has changed and we've got you a little bit back in the uh, ABD wheelhouse or maybe it hadn't and you're just doing us a favor. But I know I ran into your team at IGL Disrupt and there was a whole bunch of you guys, including Jamie Schmidtke, who's a former peer of ours that um, you know knows this integrity business, knows the challenges of you know VDI on premises, colo, and in the cloud. And I'm just super happy to have you know people that I know know the space back helping us do this podcast. Glad to be here. Well, tell me, is your role, what is your role as of now? I think the last time you did one with us was probably July of last year. Yeah. So GBV on the AVD and the AVS uh, products. Okay. So, so now you have two uh, jobs. Then. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, there for a while, we were just kind of still moonlighting in AVD and it was more uh, the general Azure population was supposed to step up and and do AVD, but it's it's a complex uh, thing. Anytime you're talking about VDI, it's you know people have this idea that desktop and people who support desktop, you know, that's entry level stuff. Well, guess what? To do it right, it's not. The smartest guy I've ever worked with in IT was the desktop support guy at a Fortune 500 company I worked at, and you know he made he made the company run. Wow. Yeah, no no doubt. I think you you get folks that are do server virtualization in there. They're all good, good with it until you until you start talking about great. Let's talk about printers and profiles and user configuration. Uh, yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, very yeah, complex. Sure. You could argue that the server side is the easier side, at least to some aspects. Definitely so. You don't have to deal with end users. You get to go live in a cave somewhere and not talk to end users that much, and that's where it really gets interesting. So we have Moen Khan. Moen is our uh, global CTO at Zintegra, plus a couple other things right now. Moen, how's it going? Going good. So Moen's role today is going to be to help us with the AVD conversation, add some color to it, as well as to cover the Nerdio components, because his team has done a lot of the Nerdio work for us in the past. So um, Rob, let's uh, let's jump in and let's go over the AVD month, uh, monthly updates from, let's say, January of 2023. We won't, we won't go back as far as September, uh, but we'll go back to January. Let me share my screen here. So January 23 and 3. So uh, first one that we have listed is watermarking for Azure virtual desktops now public. That matters. Yeah. Yeah. Watermarking is something that was slated for a while. It's I think it is GA now, uh, as we'll see as we roll forward. Uh, but, uh, you know, watermarking, something you've seen uh, capability in Citrix for some time. Uh, now added to AVD, you know, to help secure the environment, uh, be able to confirm you know, that the endpoint uh, connection and the data stays uh, stays where it's supposed to be. So this is very relevant with the things that have happened with the leaks um, around Ukraine recently. So let me let me say this. I am pleasantly surprised every time I jump in and start looking at the updates to AVD, to native AVD, uh, to see that Microsoft continues to pick up pieces of the story that others, you know, are ahead on. But Microsoft certainly knocking them out, you know, as a as it evolves. Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, we've probably said, you know, before that, you know, in the in the old days of, you know, RDS terminal server, um, you know, client updates and RDS improvements happened um, with OS releases or back in the day when we had service packs, yeah. you know, those, those things happened then. Now, you know, client updates can happen every couple of weeks and features can drop a lot faster. And I think, I think customer uh, expectation now that there's more people using native AVD, uh, either native completely or they're leveraging other tools like like our friends at, uh, at Nerdium, um, you know, they they they're they're pushing the envelope. They want to see these features that they had in uh, in Citrix or Horizon, uh, you know, in the past, and they want to bring them forward. So, so yeah, I think the development team is a lot quicker to bring some of these uh, these things out. Yeah, this is a really big topic and something I wanted to go to in, into before we started going through the updates, but I got jumped right into it. Um, and we, we're seeing this all the time where 
not only does iterative development enable this to happen now and releases to happen, like you just said, you know, Microsoft clearly is after this desktop business in the cloud much more than they were after the RDS business back in the data center. Yeah, it's it's definitely still both a platform and a full solution, right? But you know, if you if you and and, and I guess you could say that with RDS on prem, it was a full solution. But my gosh, it was really a difficult thing and, and a difficult beast if you were going to try and deploy uh, native RDS on prem. I think native AVD or AVD with other tools definitely um, you know a, a more uh, reachable destination than it was in the past. Still yeah. today. Uh, it's still a great platform for our partners to improve upon Nerdio, Citrix, you know, certainly, you know, help to propel that, you know, exponentially. And we still see, I think, the majority of folks that are on-prem when they make that shift, they're they're doing it with their partner, uh, either with Citrix or Horizon or or they're leveraging Nerdio in a lot of cases. Yeah. Right. So Moen, um, do you have a take on where we're at in terms of native AVD being able to be a really um, consumable workload for the average customer? Yeah, I think it is uh, ramping up uh, fairly quickly than I anticipated. My initial expectation was that uh, Microsoft, uh, just like um, in past, uh, uh, they do uh, give you those options, but they do not uh, innovate or uh, go into extra uh, mile on making it usable. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit surprised that um, Microsoft has invested in and uh, it is vested in uh, making it uh, usable and uh, slowly the use cases, which was at one point uh, a small to medium sized customer without getting into um, uh, using a tool to uh, do the management and um, removing your PowerShell limitation. It is very quickly uh, ramping on to uh, making it more uh, medium sized customer, uh, use, usable for medium sized customer as well. Yeah. And we'll talk more about that when we talk about Nerdio here in a few minutes. But, you know, it's, it's the, the fun part is you don't touch it for a month or two and then you look up and these features have been added. The, the, the great yet scary part is there's so many problems to solve that is we got a long list of things to add yeah. to get them all done. Um, because the, the you know the the bar keeps moving, it keeps going up. More use cases, more opportunities to solve problems and create partnerships and develop new ways to solve them. Okay, uh, number two on the list here is give or take away control for Mac OS teams on Azure virtual desktops now generally available. Rob, what's that about? Yeah, so I think um, you know these all of these teams features. You know, we think of teams as one thing, but it's 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 really a collection of a lot of things, right? Um, and and then with any feature that we have uh, that are client related, um, we always build them for Windows first, right? So the Windows client gets gets done first, and then we kind of work down the stack. Um, you know, usually uh, Mac Mac is uh, second, and then we hit the iOS Android space, and we're always doing stuff on the you know, on the, on the web client as well. But in this case, you know, uh, it further extrapolated from Teams because Teams is a lot of different pieces and parts. You know, it's not just to say, oh, we support Teams. Uh, well, you know, um, you know, we didn't have the ability to share screen um, in the past and we brought that forward later. Um, and in this case, it's bringing that uh, give or uh, take control away uh, in, a, uh, in a Teams session. And you can see, uh, they kind of go hand in hand um, with being able to do window sharing uh, while in a VDI session, right? Um, so, in, you know, from the beginning, we've done Teams, gosh, you know, a few months after, maybe maybe six months after AVD or WVD then uh, went live, um, you know, we were really just basic functionality and now, you know, the ability to share windows inside of Teams. Yeah. Okay. So that first one was about Mac OS, which is really, I mean, you got to think of AVD as this asynchronous solution where there's back end component and then there's endpoint component, uh, you know, the AVD client running on Mac OS, and then the ability to do features within that session. And so I think you kind of just covered both of those in that same comment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and we continue to see those, those teams features drip through and it's, it's, it's challenging on, on our side because those are, those are really pushed to the team's team, 
to do, not so much the ABD team. So uh, those, they are delayed in some cases, you know, because of that. But there's a whole set of Microsoft Office related technologies like Teams, like SharePoint, like Outlook that, um, man, those things are super important if we're going to have ABD adoption. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, keep in mind, one of the key uh, thing that it, it enabled these two features um, was the ability to um, uh, take Teams and redirect peer to peer, right? Um, so without that peer-to-peer, take it out of the session, push it down to the endpoint. Um, you know that had to happen happen before either of these these capabilities could be. And I, I was in a situation last week actually with the Microsoft guys, and um, I'm assuming he wasn't using AVD at this moment, but he was um, he was able to use a um, uh, not a hologram, but a uh, what do you what do you call it when you impersonate yourself with some type of cartoonish looking thing? Oh, those those avatars. Avatars, yeah. yeah. He, he did an avatar. I have to assume that's not available in AVD yet. I don't oh. think so. I think they're kind of creepy, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. Hey, Mo, and I so much want to come to you and ask you all these questions, but we had three months worth of AVD and Nerdio to catch up on. I'll, I'll come to you when we get to the end of January and just ask for any rounding out of what we talked about here. Uh, and then finally, this is an easy one to cover. Windows 7, end of support for AVD. Is this... Windows 7, the virtual desktop, or Windows 7, the endpoint we're talking about here? Windows 7. I think pretty much all of them, right? Um, okay. So, oh. yeah, we had we had uh, uh, extended support that was uh, kind of still continuing, um, and I think this is the end of that. Yeah, calls out your clients. Okay, Moen, uh, these are the January 23 updates. Any of these you want to double-click down on while we, before we move to February? Just out of uh, curiosity, more for uh, Rob and for my understanding, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, two weeks ago when I was in uh, Nashville, I get down uh, from the plane and uh, walking by and I see um, uh, airport terminal running Windows 7. Uh, and this was uh, the check-in, uh, the agent that they use. So do you, uh, is this something that Microsoft is seeing a lot of um, uh, still people using Windows 7? Um, or any direction on um, how uh, people are, uh, or, or Microsoft or War, they are looking to get out of this Windows 7, uh, which has already gone end of life. Any take from your side? Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a really good call out, and you know I think it's a lot like what we saw with older generations of of Windows, right? Uh, you know the Windows uh, NTs and fours and. Um, XP, people held on to XP for a long time. And I think, I think one of the things that Microsoft has really shifted is kind of away from that, that full release from a desktop operating system and trying to, you know, put those out as more um, regularly updatable, um, you know, um, operating systems, you know, shifting from Win 10 to Win 11 wasn't really that, that major of a shift. So I think um, you know what we've seen is that some of those are going to kind of follow shorter cadences. Yeah. All right. Let's um, go look at February. Um, Symmetric Net support for RDP short path and public preview. Rob, the yeah. heck is yeah. So um, you know, SNAT um, and and really RDP short path. So let's talk. Talk about RDP short path uh, first. So um, the way uh, AVD, um, one of the capabilities that that changed the protocol from the beginning was to be able to enable reverse connect so that um, users, when they connect, they're not actually uh, connecting to the endpoint. They're not connecting to that session host to provide it, you know, an added layer of security. RDP short path kind of takes it straight to the uh, to the VM and kind of a piece that I missed on that that first explanation of that um, um, that reverse connect is that we went back to an earlier version of 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 really RDP and that version uh, was TCP based. So um, we know that from a VDI perspective um, and and certainly from uh, playing a video or listening to a phone call or you know, being on a webinar, we know whatever happened 20 seconds ago is irrelevant. I don't need to acknowledge my packets because I only care about what's happening now. So 
Uh, UDP definitely gives a, a better experience from that perspective because you don't have all of the uh, acknowledgement that, that needs to happen. So short path, we see a lot of folks leveraging that, uh, especially in um, multimedia environments, VoIP environments, um, you know, places where they're going to use uh, maybe Teams and be able to do some redirection, that kind of thing. Short path, you know, really makes it nice so we can get that RDP uh, path in a UDP packet format. Uh, symmetric NAT, on the other hand, kind of helps us to just um, uh, uh, accelerate the environment, be able to um, do some of the connections that we want to connect. Um, for the user in the session to still give them a quality of service uh, in that session. So I think it's more of a longer term telemetry of being able to deliver, um, you know, better experience. And I think this puts us on the path to be able to continue that. Yeah. Yeah. I love those conversations because in theory, we're moving the user further away from where the Executions happening in, you know, we're, we're we're taking what is supposed to be a connection from the graphics processor across a little cable to a display like a monitor. The fact that this stuff works as well as it does is amazing. We we owe that to faster networks and smarter software that is smart enough where the human eye doesn't necessarily even know it. It isn't right there in front of. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would totally agree. We. We are seeing, you know, more and more folks that are, you know, delivering sessions across the pond, um, you know, extending that, um, you know, that, I guess, pushing the envelope of, of really what's acceptable, um, you know, for some of those connections. Well, across the pond or just, you know, an extra 200 miles away, it's almost unnoticeable. Um, and, and let me put this out there real quick. We, we still run into a lot of conversations where it's, you know, one of the more advanced protocols, one of the legacy protocols versus RDP. Rob, from a performance perspective, if you could kind of quantify it with a number, what would, and this is Rob, not Microsoft saying this, um, what what would you say the performance of RDP versus, let's say, an ICA or a BLAST is these, these days, HDX, sorry, marketing guys, HCA, HDX versus RDP versus BLAST. Are we really talking about that big a difference these days in the presentation protocols? You know, I, I've seen some recent um, um, testings of, of folks where they're showing multiple sessions, and I, I don't think it's like what we used to see uh, in 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 varying differences. I think um, one of the one of the key aspects is I think that that uh, you know uh, certainly for for HDX ICA uh, ability to set um, kind of SLA. On that, on that delivery, be able to break up the channels and and do things. So there's still, I think, some some value there. Um, not only that, I think that, um, in you know, when they're both performant networks, I I think you're not going to see a difference, right? Um, you know, RDP will try to use as much bandwidth as you give it. So, you know, as long as you have plenty of bandwidth, then and you know, performance is going to be great. Okay. I think that where you run into some of the real key differences is in specific applications that haven't yet been certified for, um, you know, what we call the side-by-side -side protocol or RDP uh, as it's used with AVD. You know, so you get, uh, you know, the Avias and the Genesis and those those type of organizations, uh, yep. their, their tools. Yeah. Well, staying on the topic of end user, uh, the next section is multimedia redirection enhancements now generally available. I guess maybe real quick explain what redirection is and then what the, the new piece is here. Yeah, so MMR, multimedia redirection, something that we've, you know, we've known about for a long time in, uh, in the VDI published app, published desktop world, um, is really that ability to take what I see in a session and redirect it to the endpoint and let the endpoint render it rather than put it in session and then kind of in it it's kind of a double hop in and of itself right um, so instead i just say connect it to this it's got the right browser uh, capability it's really what we're doing in teams um, but we're doing it now for um, kind of native traffic in in browser uh, um, environments right and it's a little bit uh, specific today. Uh, I think it's something like 30, and it, I'm sure it's more than that. It's probably 40 websites that are approved for this MMR 
uh, in browsers. So things like YouTube, uh, for example, are, are you know are approved. So um, and as I understand, there's a little bit of a complexity getting additional um, you know websites approved through that. That it it takes some man hours. Um, we're going to see sometime in the future where um, uh, we have that kind of in more of an SDK where it's it's already ready to go and you know additional things should should just automatically happen. Uh, yeah. But we're not uh, we're not there yet today. But but this is a big step forward, I think, for being able to get uh, multimedia um, improved performance. And, and I'll add twofold for that. One is the user experience. Yes, also getting that uh, workload off the CPU and the virtual desktop onto the endpoint if it can handle it. It's a it's a it's a win win. Yeah, that's true. All right, last one here, uh, new user interface for Azure Virtual Desktop web client. So not the native client, but the web client now in public preview. What's that all about? Just a, a cleaner look uh, when you use the web client. We, you know, we probably, I would say we see the web client get used quite a bit, right? It's just so easy. Um, so, you know, this is purely about kind of the way it looks and, and behaves. You can uh, kind of pin different things change the color, you know, those types of things. Um, yeah, I think it's maybe the beginning of hopefully other things and other features that we really um, need to be able to bring forward um, the web client to be more on par with what we see with like the Windows client, for example. Um, um, and that's really super important because almost everything you touch has an HTML5 capable web browser on it. And if we can keep those features coming, then any device becomes an AVD potential client target. Moen, uh, that's the end of the, the February 23, 2023 uh, updates. Any questions or comments you want to chime in on? Uh, I think uh, the biggest one that um, I was happy to see is um, uh, multimedia redirection. Uh, I feel this goes in line with um, uh, adding more users to the box and uh, one of the limitation um, or uh, challenges that people were seeing in past was uh, because they couldn't off offload a lot of these things. So there was a performance and then adding more users to the box um, was a challenge. So uh, I think uh, all, all, the all the options that I see here um, is uh, another step towards uh, a broader adoption adoptation of uh, uh, bigger use cases that we can uh, we can see people using it for especially with these things right all right let's move on to uh, march first one here rob is a um, redesign connection bar redesign connection bar for windows desktop client yeah so um this just gives a little bit different uh, look and feel for the connection bar um, being able to kind of see around it better, be able to move it around, pin it um, in ways a, a little bit more um, usable than the way it was in the past. I think also relative to the desktop client, the changes that that came about, I think uh, that the client now updates automatically. Um, if you ever remember in the past, uh, Windows uh, uh, updates for the um, remote desktop client, they were they were manual. You had to go in and apply those updates, you know, more manually, which is really kind of not that big of a deal. But when you think about the typical user, that could be a, a major ordeal. And then you think about the administrative effort of having to push those clients out, especially to non-domain joined VMs, uh, or, sorry, non-domain joined uh, PCs, you know, that could be challenging. Uh, in and of itself. So I think some some nice uh, improvements to the Windows desktop, desktop client. Yeah. Um, and I assume whatever came there will eventually show up in the Linux and iOS and Mac clients if it's you know warranted. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, shutdown session host status. What's that one? Yeah. So uh, you know we have an agent uh, that uh, that goes out and you know looks at the uh, session hosts to determine the health and state of them. Uh, we now have additional statuses than we had before, uh, but it can it can tell you, hey, um, this machine is available and that's the highest uh, mark. Uh, and that's what you want to see on all of them. Uh, some other things you might see are, um, it needs to be shut down and at the earliest convenience, get, try and get a reboot. Um, there's others that are saying that it's, 
that it's running okay, but that, hey, um, I forget what that one's called, but there's probably about eight or 10 uh, different um, um, statuses that can be uh, delivered. I think it shows, you know, when it's being, when it's offline, it's just not communicating. We don't know why. Um, it could be off, uh, so we can see that it's that's actually shut off. Um, so some of that stuff, that telemetry comes forward to be able to see that status into the into the portal. Um, there's some other uh, pieces, like you can see, like agent push statuses and stuff like that when it's supposed to do updates. Uh, so that kind of goes through and gives some other uh, detailed analysis of the uh, you know what's going on with your session host. Yeah, this, this is really good stuff. I mean things that are certainly going to make it better, not only for the end user, but for the team that has to administer this environment. Uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11 22H2 images now visible in the drop-down menu. So this is so that uh, what users can have more options in terms of the VDIs they're deploying in AVD? Yeah, just as we bring forward uh, additional um, uh, machines in the gallery uh, marketplace, so you can pull those things down and leverage those those machine types, um, you know, that you can, you know, build from. Uh, next one is uniform resource identifier schemes and public preview. I'm super excited about this one. Well, yeah, this, I know what this is. You know what this is? Uh -uh. No, okay. This this is actually kind of a good thing. Um, you know, each uh, desktop, uh, uh, published desktop or published app, uh, now has a unique identifier. Um, that you can you can call to trigger it. Um, I think on the on the surface it it doesn't seem very meaningful, but when you think about uh, say doing something like Terraforms or something like that, where hey, I, I only want to publish Word here. Well, how 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 do I call just Word? You know, in that automated uh, template form, and in this case, I can bring that URI in here and drop that in. So if you're scripting uh, access to some of these things, this this could be, you know, fairly meaningful instead of having to do, hey, let me go query it, see what's available. Then when I get a list, I have to pull that forward. You know, now it's just grab the URI and move forward from there. Well, let's let's since you brought up scripting and I'll throw PowerShell into that comment. Um, it seems to me that six months ago, I would have told you you had to be a superstar with PowerShell and scripting to pull off managing a decent size ABD environment. Are you still seeing that? Or is a lot of this becoming uh, built into the solution itself? Um, you know, when I see folks going down the native path, you know, folks like Nerdio certainly help to automate that and make that easier, right? Um, I do see less less the requirement of of being focused on scripting and now more just the ability to do things more efficiently. So I see the very large um, organizations with with a lot of a lot of brain power um, being able to do you know more scripting to to simplify their tasks for their administrators. So you know we do see a good bit of Terraform and PowerShell um, you know that folks are using alongside of uh, their environment, but. Uh, less as a requirement and more at today as a as just a, a way to reduce steps. Yeah. All right, Rob, last one for March of 23, Azure Virtual Desktop Insights at scale now generally available. Yeah, um, so being able, so, you know, I think one of the things we, we get hit with a lot is uh, that there's not really that telemetry data uh, available uh, for monitoring. Right, and we we do recommend third parties to do that as well. And there are some great third parties in this uh, in this space to to be able to pull monitoring data. But again, you know, like with a lot of things, we start to push that forward and bring forward more and more of that monitoring uh, capability into uh, the portal. So in, in this case, um, you know, being able to pull some of the insights. Um, you know, straight into the portal without having to go and do, um, you know, some complex scripting to go grab that data from log analytics. I think now, you know, being able to say, hey, I want to see what's my round trip time, um, you know, uh, from the user to the session, you know, what was, you know, kind of login, you know, time relative to the user session. So, you know, 
um, you know, this started out, I think, a few, maybe six, seven months ago with some of the um, ADD team asking for uh, input on, on what should be brought forward. And, you know, I think some of that's just starting to come uh, come into the product here uh, with uh, with insights to be able to to see that straight in the portal. Yeah. Yeah. Another example of Microsoft really wanting this business because that's stuff that's you know, historically been years and years behind with real, with players, and uh, Microsoft knows you you got to have that for enterprise deployment. Yeah, yeah. All right, Mo, any questions around the March twenty three updates? Just a quick question on the last point um, on uh, <clears throat> more on insights. So, is this something, uh, Rob? Um, we are uh, is Microsoft still going to play with? Uh, the providers who have built their business around uh, providing these um, analytics and uh, data on uh, monitoring, or is it something where Microsoft is continuing to invest and at one point look into providing the complete solution versus uh, partner ecosystem? You know, that's a good question. It's kind of that, uh, what was the analogy? I, I think I heard somebody use the snowplow uh, analogy, you know, the the staying in front of the snowplow. Um, definitely the AV team, uh, AVD development team continues to develop new features and bring them forward and, you know, no different on the monitoring side. Um, I think, um, you know, in this space, there's still plenty of, of room for, uh, for uh, improvement um, from the native standpoint and, um, and the capabilities that the third party uh, tools uh, generate. I think one of the key differences is we we're storing a lot of this insight data in log analytics, um, and some of those storage costs are a little bit more expensive than if you were to write that to a database. So, uh, you know, some of the vendors that that do write to you know to a database uh, relative to monitoring data, that's a tremendous savings financially. Um, um, you know, as opposed to you know maybe the way that it's stored in in log analytics. So I, th I think there's um, you know certainly some some nice things that I've seen from Control Up, for example. Um, you know, they do uh, some great telemetry data. So yeah, I, I think and, and you know and then that that kind of goes into other partner areas like uh, the ability to kind of assess uh, application compatibility. You know, we don't really have anything in that space, but like the Remo 3 folks do a nice job there too. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Rob, thank you for helping us with the AVD. Now we get to flip the script on Moen a little bit here. Moen, we're looking at uh, some of the Nerdio things. Okay, so Nerdio is a tool that allows you to enable better management of native AVD. So you've got your M365 entitlements, multi-session windows running in Azure, um, and then you get the brokering and management system that comes along with AVD, which is you know uh, evolving UI as well as the ability to manage through PowerShell and PowerShell scripts. Then we have Nerdio that solves some of this stuff in a uh, more of a um, tool portal model where you add this in addition to native AVD. Uh, Mo, and the first thing listed here for the uh, February release of Nerdio 4.7 is Nerdio Advisor AVD Modeler Updates. So again, uh, this is uh, going in line with uh, making it usable for enterprise. And this is something that... Uh, uh, Nerdio has done a great job in uh, keeping it up where uh, enterprise can look into making it uh, usable for their use case. So I think um, um, yeah, the first um, uh, on, on the cost side, and this is something that they have done a, a good addition to the functionality uh, being uh, being uh, able to look at the cost factor of um, a chargeback on uh, USD and multi-currency. Uh, I think uh, this Nerdio advisor has um, uh, has been ramped up to uh, to not only add the, give the complete visibility from the chargeback perspective, but also adding the different currency uh, and then the cost conversion. So these are uh, two good things from uh, from inter-department costing and um, uh, giving uh, giving a ROI calculation back to uh, our businesses. Um, on making sure that they understand what the chargeback model will look like for, for for different line of businesses. Yeah. So Rob, pretty common conversation has been for a while. However, Nerdio continues to evolve this capability. Do you see this concept in 
needed a lot and uh what kind of conversations you have around it yeah not not only um what Mohan said on the on the chargeback um uh, but just just work groups being able to understand what's their per user cost this is um you know this is a, a, a just great knowledge for folks to be able to have because you know a consumption based model can be difficult for them to really kind of understand where they are and it's really the first step towards being able to optimize those costs and that's generally what i see in you know six, six month uh mark of folks running avd is great how do i reduce my costs here yeah, yeah. Yeah, we find a lot of customers um, miss their costing model greatly and then got to get their hands around it. Some of that's on them. And well, maybe it's just going into it, not knowing exactly what the model, what it was going to really cost and got to be able to measure that. Um, all right. Number two, one here, Moen, uh, end user personal desktop revert to original size premium feature. What in the world? What is that? So, so that is something, uh, uh, you know, how um, uh, in other uh, uh, like Horizon Citrix uh, days, uh, there was uh, um, keeping keep, keeping image uh, consistent and uh, keeping uh, uh, the read read only image type of scenario where someone goes in and make changes, uh, they reboot and it goes back. Um, so this is something uh, from the desk side that uh, Nario has added that um, if someone has uh, um, changed the disk size uh, or the original uh, size of uh, on the VM uh, or uh, or a PC, the when they reboot it goes back to the original state. Uh, so uh, something very. Uh, this is the feature where when you are trying to have uh, a volume of uh, images where you are managing. I feel this becomes uh, very important on keeping uh, things consistent and uh, in line with um, um, in line with um, uh, keeping the image pristine and those things. Uh, so it's a good good functionality to have in place on defining the standard and keeping it up with it. Rob, any comments on this one? Um, I wasn't aware of this feature. I think that I, you know, I, I don't think I've seen where you know users have done that. Um, so I, I wasn't even aware that was an issue. So uh, this is kind of news to me. The um, I've seen some other uh, pieces from Nerdio being able to um, resize. Um, um, so when you send out for deployment, I've had deployments fail, and I think Nerdio has an ability to to kind of change that. Um, but I don't think this is not, maybe it's related, but not uh, not the same use. I, I, I love what just happened there. I mean, Rob, you're an expert in this space. Things are happening that even you don't know in terms of features coming from either you guys or one of your close partners. That's why we do this podcast. Didn't, didn't know that even happened. All right, number three on the uh, February updates, encryption of host support, Moen. This is uh, the more, uh, in my opinion, this is this is one of uh, the uh, the very important uh, functionality that Nerdio has added. I'm not sure if um, uh, Microsoft had this uh, natively out of the box. I somehow felt that this option was there, uh, where you can go and uh, secure um, uh, different layers of um, uh, infrastructure. Uh, with your uh, with your gateway, with your host, with your brokerage, and all those things, I felt that option was there. But looking at this, seems like um, uh, that option was not there out of uh, box, and they have added where we can support end to end uh, do end to end encryption, which is something that we 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 promote and we talk to every business that uh, you need to have end to end encryption. So just to be clear here this is not only encrypting the delivery of the protocol yeah we get that um that's part of the rdp solution this is encrypting at the host level so there's complete end to end like you were pointing out yeah so, so you know how even in citrix uh, it citrix and uh, horizon it used to be optional component um, uh, that you can take your vdas or your application workload and then you can go all the way to application workload I thought that option was there, but seems like uh, uh, that option was not there. And 
uh, non audio has added that option to go. But I don't know if it's not level. there. It's just now you can manage it in Nerdio. Rob, has this always been something that was doable? Just now, Nerdio is surfacing the ability to do it. It it's been there, um, but but not commonly used. Um, it wasn't something that you could even do really from the uh, from the portal as much. Um, it was more, I think, um, uh, command line to be able to 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 make that yeah. happen. I think uh, I think it might also um relate i think in april um, um wvd uh, avd um, has uh, released a managed key capability to store uh, pieces alongside of that so you know there might be a little a little overlap there as well so maybe this is a good time to point out that there are things that you can do in avd um in some cases, Nerdio makes it easier to do those things, or in some cases, maybe a, a Nerdio makes it to where Microsoft enabled it, but Nerdio adds a little bit of, let's say, icing on the cake to make it work even better or easier to do or easier to manage or easier to decommission, um, maybe all the above. Uh, that's that's yeah, That's been the Microsoft world forever. Good products, and sometimes you bring a partner in to make them great products. Yeah, I believe there's a UI that is being added now. So now you don't have to um, uh, do this through PowerShell or go and install a certificate on multiple places. Now these things can be done from the UI level. Yeah. All right. Um, man, there's so much stuff here. Um, we'll go through the rest of uh, February. My my wife's going to be looking for me any minute now. Um, <laughs> per, uh, per, user, so, per user currency preferences. No way. So, so, so this goes in line with the first uh, changes uh, on the cost optimization and uh, advisor. So they just added multiple currencies. So in the interest of time, Andy, we, I can just hit maybe important features and functionality, if that is okay with you. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's, yeah, let's hit so, the ones of this, you know, January and then, uh, sorry, February, March, the ones that, what are the Nerdio enhancements that you think are most important that we cover? So I think uh, the seventh one is the most important one. Yeah, tagging is uh, important, but the seventh point that is dedicated uh, desktop start and stop time option. So again, that is something that could have been scripted, uh, but that was always for someone who is not good with PowerShell and uh, trying to uh, go through drain, uh, draining users from the machine and then trying to go and set up time on when machine goes goes down. And especially... When we talk about uh, uh, healthcare, when we talk about banking industry, when people are coming in morning at eight o'clock and then someone going and executing those script or trying to schedule those things, uh, this functionality in my view is, is it has taken this uh, solution um, way closer to a more critical workload like healthcare and, um, and financial uh, institute where you can go and schedule these things. Yes, you can do auto shrink, you can do auto grow. The scalability, uh, scalability, auto scalability function, functionality was there, but now trying to do a desktop start and stop, this is something uh, is really, really important functionality that they have added where you can go and eight o'clock workload comes in, seven o'clock I will go and do auto start. So my workload, my provisioning, all those application, if it is coming from, uh, uh, different places, streaming, app layering, and all those things, they are all ready to go. So when 8 o'clock uh, session starts, uh, you're not sitting there and uh, turning all those machines. So, Rob, that's a big deal, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, it goes back to that, uh, hey, I've been running uh, ADD on a consumption model. How do I save cost? You know, and, and you know, the, and I think every time that Nerdio gets introduced to an AVD customer, it's usually, you know, we're going to, you know, we're going to more than save our cost um, and then some, right? And I think, I almost think they should change the, the uh, pricing model to, hey, it's free. We just we just keep what we save you, you know? Yeah, that would be huge. <laughs> he, um, so so we've got the, got the, they already have more April releases out too. It came out today, I think. Uh, but let's, Moen, so version 4.8 released on March 22nd. We'll go with this. Um, any what what are the most important of the 4.8 releases that you would highlight for us? So the the, the premium feature that they're talking about uh, again going back to uh, 4.7 where they added this uh, functionality of disk uh, scaling and uh, uh, now 
Uh, this is the pre-staging component that they have added, uh, which is uh, again key, especially when we are trying to um, um, work towards um, the large workload or uh, volume of users that we are trying to bring in on having a pre-staging functionality where you can go and get all those things, uh, uh, your uh, intelligent uh, uh, OS desk, um, uh, configure it, get it ready, um, set it up all from UI. So now you don't have to go and run a bunch of uh, PowerShell scripts to make this. Um, um, and, and this was one, this is one of the functionality uh, that pulls AVD down uh, because image management and uh, trying to synchronize uh, uh, auto scaling and image management was one of the one of the key things that the Nerdio was pushing for. And this is uh, one step where they have um, uh, taken this uh, step for, further down by giving you option to pre-stage everything. That's huge. Rob, any comments on that one? Matt, just, uh, you know, as we think about smarter, you know, uh, AI type of things, this is the kind of thing that we, you know, we almost expect, you know, would would uh, would materialize, right? Um, you know, gone would be the, hey, you know, what time of day does a user come in, you know, and trying to guess the user behavior instead, monitor it and, and act on it. That's that's very cool. Yeah, I mean, look, the data is there. Yeah, we don't guess anymore. The data is there and, and cloud and uh, as a service things should just get better. It's like, a, you know, it's like the whole Tesla argument. Your Tesla should be better the day you get rid of it than it was the day you bought it because the software got smarter based on it and you the whole way. Uh, Moen, anything on the, uh, anything else on the March uh, release? Uh, 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 on, on, on the same line, uh, the other option is uh, uh, your um, uh, two, two more components to it. Uh, and again, this is the, the first thing. Uh, second one was uh, timers. So now you can uh, not only go and uh, pre-stage it, but also set up a um, um, timer on when you want these um, pre-stage uh, post or disk to be available. And then that's, uh, the third one is um, uh, activation, your auto activation of those images. So when you are staging it, you don't want uh, those things to be um, uh, activated, especially when the licensing side but then trying to control your auto activation. So these three functionality, um, I feel um, uh, your desk, your uh, pre-stage, setting up that timer on when you want to take this um, online or in prime time, and then also activation on uh, auto activation. So I think uh, these three are the most important thing from, uh, the, um, from uh, the image management perspective. And then other thing that was always missing was uh, admin role assignment. On making sure that you can go and do a custom um, role assignment for uh, for your admins, so I believe I believe this these are the key functionality that was added in um, um, in 4.8 release. Yeah. Hey Rob, any comments on any of those that Moen covered? Um, may, maybe not on that, but um, but I, I, I one that I saw uh, in the list there was uh, uh, FS Logics uh, from a storage perspective. Some of the um, the ability to uh, take uh, and have a profile that's active be in premium storage. And when it gets, um, you know, when they log out, that it gets moved automatically uh, down to a lower tier to save on cost and it'll shift back when the user logs back in. I think that's, I think that's genius. Yeah. Yeah. It's really smart what these guys are doing. Um, guys, I got to go. It's, uh, it's the end of the day on Monday and, uh, but this is great. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna keep this up, right? We're gonna keep these uh, conversations going. Where you only have to cover one month at a time. We could have talked about that for two hours. Exciting to see what both Microsoft and Nerdio are doing in the space. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, we'll have uh, some of the Nerdio guys on. Maybe Greg Robertson next time as well. Yeah. Well, I think Moen did a fantastic job. I oh, think absolutely. Did that well. Absolutely. But yeah, always good to have Greg on. Um, coming right from the horse's mouth. Well, guys, I appreciate it. You know, one of the reasons why, there's two reasons why I'm rushing us off here. One, it's, uh, you know, six o'clock on a Monday night. Uh, but the other reason why is I can't wait to hit the stop button on this recording. I've got four different customers I've talked to in the last couple of weeks. I can't wait to send this to because we covered stuff they needed to know. Really excited about it. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, we'll do it again in a month. All right. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. Thanks, Rob.